Controversy on the big stage. Controversy that's dominating the headlines. Controversy enveloping the entire football world. And you probably haven't even heard of it, you loser. It's not like you're even paying attention. Are you even trying? Do you even know ball? Do you even know soccer? Do you even know calcio? You know nothing! Why? Why do you know nothing? Because you're not paying attention to the Hungarian U14 League. That's right. This is, this is a deep track today. This is a deep cut. We're going to Hungary and we're going to the U14s because something absolutely positively ridiculous has happened to the U14s and we're conducting a Zealandism investigation to find out whether it was fraud or whether it was real. And by the end of this video, you will be able to cast your own judgment, cast your own stone like the voters in ancient Athens about whether this was fraud or the greatest comeback in the history of mankind. Now, there are a couple of interesting angles to tackle in this U14 league. First of all, there are only 16 matches. And the incident at hand is that the matchup on the final day between Karagagagyazi uh, and Mikloshi, which I believe are two different noises that I make when I sneeze, uh, came down to goal difference. It came down to who was going to have the better goal difference. And Miklosi had a much better goal difference. But they were coming into the final day playing against Nyar Larinci, uh, third noise that I make when I sneeze. And Nyar Larinci's in fifth in the league, as you can see here, with a positive goal difference, which is kind of a big deal because if we start looking at the negative goal differences below, things get a little disorienting, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and so Miklosi ends up winning 1-0, which means Miklosi's won 14 of its 16 matches with one draw and one loss. I would assume those were kind of against each other because these two teams seem to be way better than everybody else. Uh, and, you know, they're looking good because going into the final match, Karagigazi has to win by 42 goals in order to win the league. Karagazi won by 42 goals. Exactly. They won 43 to 1 against Palmanostra. Palmas Palmanostra. They won 43 to 1 in a regulation match, in, an, in a league that is at least important enough for me to know that that happened. And that means Karagigazi pulled off the greatest comeback of all time to win the league. But of course, anytime you win by the exact amount of goals you need to win the league, and that exact amount happens to be something higher than, I don't know, four, you're going to you're gonna trigger an investigation. And that's exactly what happened. The way I found out about this is the, you know, the Federation, the buzzkill that those things always are, has started an investigation already into Karagigazi. But I'm going to be honest, I am not entirely convinced that this was rigged. But now hear me out. I need you to hear me out, okay? The first part of this argument lies on the fact that in the Hungarian U14 league, as we all know, it's very top heavy. And the, the bottom part of the league in, the, in this U14 league is terrible. Uh, not just Palmanostra, right? They're probably still better than me, but Palmanostra won one of their 16 matches they played this year. And going into the final match of the season, Palmanostra had already conceded 155 goals in 15 matches. 155 goals in 15 matches. Now, look, they're not the only one. Hell of SCI uh, has conceded 141 goals. Right in, in in the 16 matches, they they went into the final day and lost 7-1 to Bugacci. Balajogi ended up with just two wins and two draws out of their 16 matches. We even have Keshkmet, who gave up 106 goals in 16 matches. Goals flow like water, like wine flowed in the Roman Empire during this league, uh, like this league session. Goals are all over the place. The scores are crazy. Right, we had an 8-7 match between Tijal Pari and Balajogi uh, that happened. Right, like just absolute nonsense. And Balajogi is one of the more defensive responsible teams out there. Well, there seem to be very, very clear tiers. We've got this, this bottom four of teams that are terrible, with Palmanastora being a particularly terrible team. Then we've got this middle tier that is basically just Nyal Narenshi. Then we've got these two teams, Tichel Pari and Bugacci, that are right They have 11 wins and five losses. They did the exact same thing and finished third and fourth. And then we obviously have the two best teams. Well, McLosey's playing the mid-table team, right? And they end up only winning one win, or like one nil, which is kind of embarrassing, honestly, if they've accumulated 140 goals in their first 15 matches, you only put together one. One, great, but they've only conceded 10 goals in 16 matches, so clearly McLosey was doing something right, obviously, because Karen, Karen, whatever, I can't say it anymore, the K team, they needed 42 goals in order to pull this off. Now, I've crunched the numbers on Palmina Stora's goal difference, okay? Now, if you take 155, which are the goals they had from the first uh, 15 matches they played this season, 
and you divide that by 15, they conceded on average over 10 goals per game over the course of the season. An average of 10.3 repeating goals per game conceded this season. So now we're trying to get, you know, trying to rationalize a 43 to 1 win for the K team. Karaka Gyazi, right? The, that team. They have to win 43 to 1, which is going to be an incredible challenge. But Karaka Gyazi going into this match had over 100 goals in their first 15 matches. They were clearly capable of scoring, right? And they'd also won 13 of those 15 matches with a draw and a loss, I can only assume, against McLossie again, uh, unless somebody else has pulled off something miraculous. Now, if we take 105 and we divide it by 15, we get a clean 7, which means this team against every team in the league, on average, is scoring 7 goals per match in the Hungarian U14 league. So if we pair up, here, here, here's what I'm saying. If we pair up, right, the team that is averaging seven goals per match against inarguably the worst team in the league, a team conceding over 10 goals per game, right, 10.3 repeating per game, right, and you, and you play that match with a title on the line and the club, I mean, this is a U14 league for crying out loud, right, motivation and, and, and belief, they go a long way. Karika Gyazi, they, they know exactly what they need to do, right? They know they need to win by an absolute bucket of goals and anything less wouldn't count. Now, look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm believing Paul Manastora would not have scored against Karika Gyazi, right, if this was rigged. That's what I'm thinking. If this was rigged, they wouldn't have scored. The only reason that they would have scored against Karika Gyazi, right, is, it, is if Karika Gyazi was putting eight guys up because they knew they needed to score 40 goals. Now, you're telling me Right, that a club that is in a title race in this Hungarian U14 league, that is clearly one of the two best teams, play, averaging seven goals against their average competition in this league, which means if they if they were playing Palma Nostora on an average match, you could probably at least double that, like what they would average score. And they know they need to score a bucket of goals, and they're playing against the team that they feel like they can score a bucket of goals against, and they're sending seven or eight up front, and Palma Nostora gets one goal. But Karika Gagazi, they, they're running up the score. Right, obviously, they need to run up the score. That's how they're going to win the league. And then there's one other factor that I think actually plays in the K team's favor here. And that is that we see this all the time. We saw it very recently in the, the promotion playoff final or the relegation playoff final from the Bundesliga where we had Fortuna Dusseldorf and Bochum. Teams score exactly as many as they need to, right? It's like a mentality thing. You know, it is a mentality thing because you're, if you're losing by one goal, but a draw keeps you alive, you're going to push like hell for that draw. But once you get to the draw, you're going to be a lot more cautious, right? Now, obviously, you'd love to win the match, but you know that if you make a mistake, you know, you, you, you're going crazy, right? Making all those extra runs, you're going to lose it, right? You can lose and, and, and if you are in this position, you're not going to chill at 20, right? You're not going to chill at 20. You are sending it. Right, and once you get to that point, well, hell, you've already given up a goal to Palma Nostora. You don't want to give up another goal to Palma Nostora. You're clearly way better than them. Just take the ball and pass it around, right? And, and make sure you keep your guys behind the ball because you've got the league in your hands right now. Now, if these matches were happening at the same time, obviously that doesn't quite apply the same way, but if you're keeping track of the scores, right, maybe in the U14 league, they're all freaking playing in the same place. I don't know. It's the Hungarian U14 league, right? Only one of the best leagues in the world, clearly. But if you're aware that the score of the other match is 1-0, you know exactly what you need to do in order to accomplish your goal here, which is winning the league. And so once you get to that point, you just stop trying to score. Or you really limit your, you know, you, you don't want to try and score anymore. So while the first time I saw this, I looked at this and, and thought that this was like the funniest, stupidest example of match fixing ever. The more I broke down this table, right? And the more I broke down human behavior and the more I broke down how like football works in this situation... I think it is entirely possible, not plausible, but entirely possible that this was actually a legitimate score. And in the case that this is a legitimate score, it is one of the most absurd comebacks in football history. I feel very comfortable saying that. You're telling me you need to win by 42 goals in the final day and you actually cook that up and it is possible based off the levels of the team right, in the, in the desperation and the necessity of this particular moment, that that actually happened, like, without match fixing, like, this one team was just that much better than the other team, and they managed to do it, Mick Pelosi would have entered this final match day assuming there was a 0% chance 
that it was possible that they lost the league. You go into the final match day, even if the other team's playing the worst team in the league, and you are up on goal difference by 42. You're up on goal difference by 42. You are already celebrating the league. That You're using phrases like, well, we haven't mathematically won it yet, but we've won it. Heartbreak for McLosey. Perhaps the greatest heartbreak that, uh, heartbreak that anybody could feel in the world of football, and it's being dropped on the shoulders of 13-year-olds. Right? That sucks. Right? I'm, so, I'm going to track this investigation if it's possible. It's probably not. Right? This bit of news just shot out, and we'll probably never hear about this again. But if I can track this investigation, I will. Because all of this suggests it's possible we are witness to one of the most unbelievable things that's ever happened on a pitch. It's possible. You get to decide for yourself. Was it rigged? Did they pay off the worst team in the league? Did they, did they bribe them with a free gift card to Chili's? Or did they actually do the unthinkable? Find out next time on The Mystery Files.